Hmm. Interesting. One thing may be missing here, and let me just see real, real quick why that is. The hmm. Oh, there it goes. Perfect. Now everything's straight up. Okay, guys. So, what is happening? Dem eyes red here, and this is the first quarterfinals game matchup between the Outsiders and Alliance. And we'll start here on the left hand side. We got Nikov as the pocket. I know it's very unconventional for me to start in the middle on the left hand side, but hey, there we go. He has the Franks. His flank on the right hand side is going to be fired with the Ethiopians. And the other flank on the other side is MBL with the Brits. On the other side, we have Risky Dice. AKA a chart here as the left hand side flank of his team with the Britons. The pocket far, far away from him is going to be Cloud, GKT Cloud, the one and only with the Franks. Last but not least, we have Berk, AKA Badream on the right hand side with the Mayans. So that's that. Before we jump into anything else, let's just keep one thing straight here. MPL starting the game with a Boar Lame. On the other side, nothing like that currently happening, so let's follow this one. I mean, there's a, I don't know, 99.9% .9 guarantee that he's going to be successful with this one. Because if someone on this plan can lame, it is this guy here. And he does it in such perfection that he actually... Wait, is it? Nah. Oh, that was actually a dirty one. See, he had 2 HP on the sheep before... <laughs> Before taking the boy, no, it's actually perfect. It's actually well done. Actually, good timing there. Just uh, don't waste too much time. Get the boy, and that's that. Meaning that a chart has a very bad start here. And, you know, keeping in mind that he's going to be up against a similar civilization. We have Britain spawn on the left-hand side. It's always an advantage to actually, you know, have additional boars. I would say that's a good start. And on the right-hand side... We have a matchup consisting of Mayans versus Ethiopians. Also an interesting one if you ask me. So you got the faster fire rates uh, over here from the Ethiopians. But also the cheaper archers from uh, the Mayans over here by Bark. And on both sides we have the Franks as the pocket player. Interestingly, over here, uh, let me just double check here. As if Nico, yeah, I was going to say, there's, this guy is just too good to miss out on a sheep. Would have surprised me if he didn't know about this. All good, all good. Just knows when to get the sheep. That's awesome. And yeah, guys, just make sure exclamation mark raffle. Type it in. Go for it. And let's make it happen. Right. So just gonna make sure. I believe that's even some uh, sheep being stolen here. Yeah, pretty sure, pretty sure. Well done by uh, back here. And the people are already walling up, especially what we can see here by MBL, for instance. Very nice. So a striking thing that I've mentioned in the beginning is the distance between uh, Chart and Cloud over here. This is quite far away. I mean, obviously, there's a high chance that Cloud is going to go for scouts anyway, so he'll be fast enough to actually help out his buddy in the beginning. But I always regard as a kind of disadvantage if the distance is just too long, uh, meaning that there could be some time in which Cloud could not help out his buddy over here. Uh, that might be the case, and sometimes just a couple of seconds can decide a very tricky situation in which possibly archers do a lot of damage. And the game is starting here on the left-hand side with a couple of militias. Interest. Uh, why is that though? Uh, that's, I believe, oh, he struggled actually. Which one did he struggle here? Just quickly checking out. It's an uneven number here. I mean, it's even, but you know what I mean. Or is it just me... Being bad at maths. Hmm. Interesting. Because I see that this is actually a drush here. From MBL. On the right hand side. We have also militias going up. Interesting. No mining camps yet. I'm asking myself what exactly is to be expected. Drush arches. Nomad arms arches. Very interesting if you ask me. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, the thing is, on the right hand side, I would expect some at arms since Mesosiv is involved. It would just make a lot of sense. We'll see. Uh, it doesn't surprise me though that MPL does go for some kind of uh, delayed uptime. We all know he likes to go for a better boom in the later ages. He has a stronger economy on his side. And with the Drush, he can ensure that he is going to be aggressive enough in the beginning. And knowing about his 
beautiful micro he can make sure at least at this point the chart is being pushed away from his berries all right so let's see let's see on the right hand side we already have here the dream aka back marching forward as well so that's the interesting thing on the right hand side the aggression comes uh, from uh, Alliance team left inside is actually the outsiders. Got some uh, interesting engagement over here. Two scouts down, but Nikov still up here, and especially this one very important because I mean it's not the end of the world if you don't have uh, berries, but it's quite a significant damage that is already being done considering the amount of idle time. Especially with the Britons, it's very important that you have the sheep first and foremost. Right inside now. The should have been killed, and all in all, seems more or less like a stalemate over here. Militia just one on each side. Not too much of idle time created, but at least some aggression has some potential aggression has been stopped due to Bax's offensive maneuver here. But everything's safe, at least for now. But this one is very, very crucial. I'm gonna look at this. That is extremely bad, as you can see. Um, delayed. Gold income. You have two archer ranges going up. You need the archers to do, basically deal with any kind of infantry easily at least. If you're delayed with the gold income, that is going to harm your military production. And with the Britons, of course, you rely strongly on your archer production. Got the bonus. Oh, look at this. Really, really awkward here. Then BL creating so much damage with his militias already. Let's see what else is going to happen over here. If I miss some on, on some action, I uh. Well, I apologize beforehand, but it's just natural. I strongly believe that in a 3v3, we might miss out on epic action. But I'll try my very best to catch everything that is currently happening. And as a matter of fact, it's actually Nikov helping out NBL on this side. And a lot of villagers already going down here. About to go down here. One is de dead and more idle time created. Not so good if you ask me. Cloud best advice to wall himself up as soon as possible. Otherwise, his uptime... This is going to be heavily delayed, heavily delayed. Let's see about this. I mean, where is his units? Slowly, slowly appearing. Marching forward. And now we have the engagement. Very, very delayed. Don't like to see this. Chart under a lot of pressure. Cloud not there in time. Will just have died. If you look at the villager count right now, Chart is the one being right the most. 25 villagers only. Both of which are idle. MBL as his opponent on the left-hand side with 30 villagers right now. So already an early advantage. Aggression-wise, the outsiders have everything under control, you would say. Right-hand side seems very, very calm, by the way. Not too much is happening. Back is given time to actually mass up his army. Could be engaging at some point very soon. But it's now the scouts game. And it seems that Cloud now has everything under control. The sneak up is going away, but that's actually just a maneuver. Nice micro here. Focusing on a single scout, and now Cloud needs to disengage and wait for further instructions by his team. And also, as expected, MBL clicking up first here to Cal Stage because he has been going for the rush. 1729, not the earliest timing, but still with that rush, with that kind of damage that has been created. Beautiful performance so far, I like it. And the other is, of course, best advice to wall themselves up. And you see already the big damage over here. Tower has been created. I mean, it's very hard to wall this one up to begin with, right? And you don't know, what is this? What is this? Oh my god. Awesome work. Nikov just with the perfect sense to strike at the right moment and get a couple of villagers just that easily. On the other side, legit not too much happening. Not too much happening. But that might change very soon. Because now the outsiders are going to expect some forward maneuver by their opponents. And they might focus here on Nikov. Together with the archers, that might be very useful as long as they have Fletch. And there's a hole. Wow. Okay. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Quick reactions. I love it. Nikov with perfect micro here. Quick walling himself up. Saving that villager. But also very sloppy of him to create this kind of mistake. But. That's just natural. There's always a hole, as they say. And indeed, the market has been delayed. And that is very important because 
you know, look at his resources. But he can cook up now. Can he? Can he? He doesn't have a blacksmith, does he? Yeah, that, that's awful. That's, that's very, very important. Because with that one, Cloud is now able to go for the next stage faster. As a matter of fact, very soon, two guys out of their team, the Alliance team, are going to be in Castle Age. Whereas on the other side, we only have MBL for now. And what might be the result of that? We'll see. Oh, another hole. I don't believe it, actually. This is terrible. Nikov now under massive pressure, and he needs to fight this one off with villagers. Very, very important quick wall over the, here, because that would have been the death of Nikov easily. But massive, massive damage already being created due to idle time to the fullest. Chaotic situation in the economy. And Nikov about to lose even more, you would say. But now, the scouts here to save the day. Wow. <laughs> Lee that going, man. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, man. Hope you're doing well. Great to see you. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Uh, awful situation currently here for Nikov, and he has been able now to actually go for the next stage, but look at the difference. There is nearly a minute difference between him and Cloud. And very soon, Cloud is going to be able to pump out some uh, knights, right? I mean, so far, I'm just seeing one stale here, if I'm uh, correctly, which is an interesting situation. Second stale will be added, but this tower over here, this is going to in the a nice boom later on. He needs some stone now. He's missing that stone. He could buy it, of course. But we'll see what exactly is going on. Because it might be now that he's forced to actually go for some more aggressive gameplay. Go for um, not only plus one, but also plus two. And then just pump out as many knights as possible. And in the meantime, try to get some stone. But that's easier said than done. We'll see. It's very surprising to me that on the right-hand side, we don't see too much, do we? I mean, look at this. Uh, both fires and uh, barracks... KD over here, very, very low. More action on the left-hand side. Yeah, exactly. Fewer of those have died than expected. That is very correct. But the idle time, I would say, was decent. And it was very chaotic. And I would say successfully, Nikov had a delayed castle age uptime. He is going for chain botting right now, though. Um, interestingly... Cloud doesn't have it. Okay, okay, look at this. And Bial now with crossbows. Whereas Chart is up here with a set of arches. And if you look at his resources, I'm gonna wait a bit more until he can click up. But now, big troubles, big troubles. Back has been able to enter the base of fire, and that's a lot of bills soon to go down. He doesn't have ballistics yet, but once he has it, all the villagers escaping will die easily. Um, and yeah, and free pikemen uh, will not help you. Fun fact, fun fact. But yeah, that's terrible. Fire now also quite in a troublesome situation. Very interesting situation, to be honest. I mean, in the meantime, as you can see, MBL doing some similar things. And if you look at the vills here, we have a chart with 43 vills. Fire only with 28 vills at this point. Just saying, it seems that the damage on the right-hand side is bigger than on the left-hand side. It seems that Alliance is creating a lot of troubles here. And they might be able to clean up MBL's army without too many Vils dying. But of course for a certain bit of sacrifices at the same time. A lot of defensive towers also. So even though Chart might be better off than Fire, he is also slowing down his own economy due to defensive decisions. But we'll see how that's gonna go. We'll see how that's gonna go. There you go. Chart now. Going up to the next stage. So late. That is the price that he has paid. It's not stopping on the right hand side as you can see with fire. And very soon, there's gonna be the answer of the outsiders. That's a huge army and back. best advice to actually escape now. Correct anticipation. He knows something is gonna happen. He needs to stay close to a forest in order to, you know, prevent... The surrounding maneuver of Nikov, that is to be expected. There we go. Yeah, that's that's awkward. That's very awkward. He tries to regroup with the other archers, with the other crossbowmen, I'm sorry. But that is not going too well, is it? I mean, obviously, even though if Barak loses a couple of crossbowmen, it's not as expensive as if Fire would lose some. But at the moment, Fire is not losing anything anymore. Just to give you a perspective, considering this kind of trait that... The dream is currently going for. 
He's forced to do that. He's even here now, close to his own TC. But as said, the Knights with plus two, they were able to tank a lot of fire and they're engaging here just to make sure that Bag is not going to be able to actually have another chance to just strike at a moment where they don't expect it because he needs to mass up more army. At the same time, Cloud now going for some raiding and this is a terrible, terrible vacuum situation because Nikov is up here and he needs to go back because currently that gap is being filled by Cloud who is raiding successfully. A lot of wills now under pressure. And these knights, also with plus two, so able to tank up a lot of fire as well. And without an issue, they will be able to break through this gate and escape. That's good. That's good from Cloud. But we'll see how much that is gonna matter. If we look at the armies, for instance, Cloud is double the amount in comparison to Nikov. That is very important. So Nikov potentially has the better economy as he has more villagers. And currently, it is just chart without wheelbarrow, just for your information. And BL and chart also without further lumber camp upgrades. Just the double with axe and stone walls by chart, by the way. Now, he feels definitely insecure considering the fact that he's up against MBL. I cannot blame him. I would probably feel worse. So he just needs to reduce the damage that is potentially done to him. Thus, the stone walls. Massive investment, though. Right, get the mango. Interesting that we don't see too many mangoes here so far in this tournament, especially in Arabia. But here we go. That's the first mangonel, I believe. Yeah, it sure is. Let's see if Fire is going to be able to actually micro this. I believe that the lag situation might not be most ideal. That was a nice connection here. A lot of low HP crossbows now. And a nice momentum here for Alliance. Marching forward with all three members now. And all focusing, tripling on fire here. They just try to get him out of the game entirely. He's already in a really, really bad situation. Would not expect this from Ethiopians. Who have great possibilities considering Boom and Castle Age. But on Arabia... Things are more different than an arena, as we know. And you can see is that open. He will not be able to profit from his tension boost that he can get advancing through the ages as Ethiopians. A troublesome situation for sure. This looks about to be over for fire. Question now is when are the outsiders gonna appear? Because if you look at the numbers, 30 knights for Cloud and only 17 for Nika. And not only 17, it's actually 15 and 3 monks. Where are the monks at though? I mean, probably just defensive monks, I strongly reckon. There we go, and he's actually also trying to get the uh, relics over here. And more and more stables, by the way. Does Nikov rightfully trust his own economy going for such an aggressive move? Uh, he might be able to do that. Interest in the MBL though, with the far bigger economy. Able to pump out even more. Got the massive engagement over here now, but it seems very, very good for the other team. Alliance doing a great job engaging and able to answer to this man over here. Fire about to lose everything on the right hand side. Left hand side also looking grim because Cloud is able to take the fire from both players here. Both MBL and Nikov struggling against him now. But these are a lot of crossbowmen. This is going to be some massive damage output here that Cloud's Knights will not be able to withstand if it continues like that. Chart a bit out of place here, needs to catch up actually. Focus is in my opinion not correctly here, needs to follow up here right away. Cloud just doesn't give up, does he? Look at this. I mean, psychologically, also very interesting, you know, he's just so, so hardcore, you know, in this engagement. But MPL is the one retreating now to, to seek some safety. Um, I believe that is a good thing for the Alliance team. Yeah, there we go, man. Imperial Age, 35 minutes. Are the Arbalists going to do the difference? 36 soon to be Arbalists on MPL's side. It's the biggest amount of crossbows here in the game currently. Not too many military units alive, as you can see. Very low numbers. Just chart and MBL with a sick number so far. Man, look at this amount. Taking it back, man. Look at this. So what? what is he going to do? Where is chart going to strike at? I wonder. He's going to drop a forward castle or what? Oh, oh my god, man. Look at this. <laughs> a 
Okay, okay. Oh, Bayello, by the way. Hello, my friends. <laughs> I cannot believe this, but look at this, man. Look at this. Oh, wow. What a disappointing move over here. Oh, so fancy, man. Look at okay, this. Okay, okay. Oh, Bayello, by the way. Hello, my friends. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that actually believe, worked, man. Look at wow. look at nice one. Nice. Doubt Castle here by our beloved chart, MBL, making it possible. And that is not ideal at all. More stuff to happen very soon. Let's check it out. Castle is up. Defensive castle has been denied. It's not looking too great. And here we have the massive engagement. It's again, just doesn't go anywhere specifically. But this one, this one definitely favors Aftermath now as they've cleaned up a lot here. And they will now look out for some potential target. But Cloud in the meantime, going for MPLH. Looking at Mikov's economy, by the way. He's also about to do that. There we go. He's clicked up now. So not a real difference here between the two. At least the uptime, quite similar. And still a bit more military for Cloud, I would say. Look at this, man. This looks quite dangerous here. And Nikov is going to be caught off the place. Look at this. There. It's nice, nice, nice. Very interesting. But at the same time, man, this is, of course, really insane. Such a ballsy castle right in the middle of your base. And you can't do anything against it, can you? So, what's the next step, you might ask yourself? Well, just in case, just in case someone comes in here with knights... Cavaliers or anything like that. There's gonna be a lot of pikemen Deal with that as you can see Therefore chart in a very very bad situation He needs some help, but the question is what kind of help does it require, right? Knights alone won't be able to help out Yeah, very important as you guys saying and be also caught to be completely untouched in this game a very very clean maneuver here Nikov trying to go for some sneaky attempt. Is it really that sneaky? We'll check it out. Because I wonder now what Chart is going to do about this. It seems to me that both Chart and Fire are in a situation that is far from ideal. But it seems worse for Chart now. If we look at the numbers, 62 volts versus 79. Also 13 idols for Fire. I'm wondering how they're going to escape from this situation. Because both now need to hold on here. They need to create this real 3v2 situation. Both sides currently aim for that one. And they also try to sabotage the pockets over here. And it seems more successful for Nikov. Potentially he's about to go in here. And do a bit of raiding here. If we look at the economy. It doesn't surprise me that Nikov is a bit ahead in comparison to Cloud. Because we know this guy is a beast when it comes to booming. But so is currently MBL. I mean, look at this. He's taking apart Shard easily now. He can't do anything against that. He's even surrounding him with a set of Arbalists here. In the meantime, this little raid here. Quite effective, quite effective. Because this is going to hinder Cloud's impact in the game with Cavaliers. Massively. It might create a situation in which Nikov could have more army. But currently, it's still Cloud here. He did well by producing a lot. He's also going for plate bot and cavalier. And Chart being forced to defend himself with elite skirmishers. Well, it makes sense. He's up against both Arbadiers now and Arbus. So that is actually something he currently requires. Let's see where this is going, guys. It seems more grim for Alliance now. The outsiders are doing a lot of damage. A lot of damage. And the superior army that Cloud has is going to be utilized in order to defend. Whereas Aftermath guys and Brazuka's guys are currently creating situations in which they are the aggressors. It seems that the outsiders control the game way more effectively. But yeah, sometimes you're going to get punished for some risky moves over here. This castle will not go up easily, you would say. But Nikov going for both Paladin and now this aggressive move. Taking the fight. Now this is getting dangerous, isn't it? Because fire has stabilized in my opinion. Even though he's fully open to a certain extent. Well, this actually looks safe now. He's given up on this front. But he has the back part here. And... 
Charge tries to imitate that one as well, but he's just set the gun. He is behind. And the Imperial Age of Fire might be very useful as well. We'll check it out. He has more military than charge in comparison. And it doesn't look too good, does it? Now, massive engagement once again. This time, Cloud might have the upper hand because there is also back here, helping out as much as he can. And it really works. But once again, for a defensive reason, right? Defensive reason. Wow, look at this here. Castle being attacked by just Cavaliers. That didn't go well for the Outsiders. Question, of course, is if that's gonna change anything considering the current situation because MPL is doing the more important moves here. He's taking away the space of chart and he's also claiming resources potentially. Whereas on the other side, Fire delivers a good fight, defensively speaking. At least it seems like that. That he's been able to actually deal with Back's offensive moves because his help is also required in the middle. He won't be able to apply the same pressure that MBL is doing. Because MBL is playing his own game at the moment, right? And Back actually needs to do that as well. Easier said than done. Because the situation in the middle is so bad for them. They require the Dream's help there as well. And very soon MBL's own game will just fade over, over here to the middle. And then it's going to be everyone's game once again if you know what I'm saying. And this might be very deadly. Wow. Wow. Someone forgot that. <laughs> okay, okay. Wonderful. It's just one. I guess some coinage is required. Slinging is not a thing. Unless you have it. It looks very chaotic now. Very soon, very soon, Nikov is about to go in again, and we're still missing the pattern upgrade for Cloud. As long as he doesn't have it, he cannot go for aggression, knowing that he's up against patterns of Nikov. Yeah, once they have Carnage, can do it. Until then, it is not possible. So you, you can technically sling, but it is going to be uh, just zero resources all in all. So you're, wait you're just burning resources for that. Yeah, rip indeed. Rip indeed. <laughs> well, happens. Happens. Ooh, and we are now also shifting the idea here now, going for your yeoman and elite long moment. Very interesting. Well, he has the time to actually do that. We are taking his time. Getting castles up. Max style. Castle after castle after castle. Beautiful. On the other side, more and more defensive maneuvers, but I, I don't know, I don't know. Fire is in an excellent position once again, economically speaking, and Chart is not yet, because, well, he has this one here. Now, let's see, let's see. Is that going to be enough? I don't think so. As we can see, they're calling GG. It's not possible anymore. They've understood. Due to the fact that the left-hand side was taken over, I mean, about to be taken over, the market situation could not work, and therefore trade would not work. And on the other side, it was more than possible. And then just realistically speaking, it doesn't make any sense anymore knowing that your trade is going to be inferior. You will not be able to just supply any kind of huge armies the way that your opponents can do it. Resulting in this GG, in which, in my opinion, MPL did a lot of very, very important work. I mean... He was very, very bossy once again, right? Risky moves, but it was done nicely. I also liked the early game of the Alliance team. But in the end, in the end, it worked better. The late game was just simply better for the Outsiders. Okay, crisscross it is. Very nice, very nice. Uh, let's start here. So we'll go for the left-hand side once again, and it is game number two, my friends. We have Cloud on the left-hand side with the Mongols. The pocket is going to be Bark, aka the Dream, with the Persians. And we have Chart on the right-hand side as the Malay. The opposition, 
consisting of MPL blank with the Aztecs, pocket interestingly Spanish, Nikov, and then fire with the Malians last but not least. Hmm. Interesting. So before we elaborate on the Civs quick introduction concerning this quite exotic but beautiful map, crisscross, this is how it looks like. Basically, basically a lot of pawns as you can see. And depending on the map generation, in this case we have a situation like that where you possibly have three safe pawns here for one team. So look at this, one, two, and three. And then you have these pawns over here on the sides that might be uh, quite valuable for the flanks. But before we elaborate, man, oh my god, man, what, 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 what? Interesting, man. Lane the lamer, is that it? Is that it? But has MBL done the same thing? I'm asking myself, yeah, 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 yeah. This is double lame, as in naming each other to equalize the situation. Yeah, yeah, seems like it. MBL has named already. Before I even announced everything, he has been able to get the boys so fast. This guy. Unbelievable. But here we go. Chart with the answer. Awesome stuff and very, very important. If you're getting lames, you either deny the lame, easier said than done, or you go for the counter lame, easier said than done as well. But here we go. Very, very important moves. So that's that. Um, yeah, so about the pawns, as you can see, the right and left-hand side pawn, very important. The middle pawn also quite essential. Even though the games that I've seen so far, the middle pawn was always the uh, last one that was actually taken over, so to speak. Uh, because it's also the most dangerous one, I would say, because everyone can actually engage in a fight on the water. So I'm interested in seeing who's going to take it at some point. Uh, but yeah, well, well done. And go with the man. Welcome, welcome, my friend. See ya. This is crossed with five additional pawns. It was quite popular in Aspiring Experts. Nice one, nice one. Yeah, I like the map as well. Uh, I'm quite happy to see it here. Not so happy probably chart currently about this denial of the dock. It's very important to actually go for an early dock. Interestingly, MBL not going for a dock over here, but potentially, yeah, just going for the safer dock in the back. There we go. If I have understood one thing from the relentless lessons of Stark, it is never go with a single villager where you can expect an eagle scout around. Because he is probably going to mess it up. Well, that's easier said than done in 3v3, if you know what I'm saying, especially on this map. Huge map. Uh, but yeah, it has currently worked. The denial of the dock, not denial, but the delay, quite impactful. Harming the opposition's economy nice lamb this is a best of five this is a best of five so the first one clicking up is cloud uh, much expected with the mongols we haven't talked about the civs yet so quick quick thing to mention uh malian spanish aztecs nice nice civs it's interesting that we see spanish here because I would normally expect them in on different maps. I mean, what about Hideout? What about Oasis? But also on this map, I mean, on in every team game, they're one of the most valuable civs ever because of their nice team bonus, a very strong impact in Castle Edge and so on. But yeah, interesting they've been chosen right now. Aztecs, of course, going to be a hell of a game for a chart because... MBL will most likely make use of the bonus that they have considering the military output, be it on water, be it on land, they will be very very annoying to deal with, especially in the hands of such a talented and aggressive person like MBL in the game at least. A chart knows better, walling himself up, correct decision, and he is going to be able to play a rather more defensive game. Let's check that one out. Or anything else, the engagement over here, but too much has happened. Not too much has happened, but it's still incoming. So yeah, what about that one? It's going to be a sneak stable for sure. As Cloud has the Mongols, he's clicked up first. But he's been caught. There we go. There we go. Fire now knows what's going to happen over here. The dice are not entirely sure. I mean, evidently, 
he is going for some kind of fast castle. He has the melee after all, so he'll be able to transition quite quickly here. And that's actually... Let me check. 24 bills and 5 fishing bills. Oh yeah, it might work. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think so. I don't think that it's going to be the nicest fast castle ever. I'm not even sure if that's going to work like that. It doesn't look uh, that ideal. So I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think that he's going to just make sure that he takes over the spawns. That's all. Nice to see back in the chat as well. How can you, how can you, you know, chat? It's impossible, man. Can you be in the game? Jokes aside, more importantly, this little sneak here, not in... Wait, this is still open, right? Yeah, yeah, it's open. Wow. Okay, very good for Cloud. So the denial has not worked. That's wasted villager time over here right now. Um, Good for him. Good for Cloud. Working. And also, this tower here. Is that a tower? Wait a sec. What, what is this? Yeah, it is a tower. Just not able to click on it on the foundation. And up at the right time. And the problems are going to get bigger from now on. Right inside, not too much happening. Not yet. You look at the water here. On the right inside. For now. Chart is taking it over, but it doesn't seem that MBR is particularly interested in that one, is he? I wonder if he's just going to go for the middle section. Because the middle section currently is free. Left hand side, we have this situation going on in which fire has dominated. But on land, he's the one struggling right now. Because that's a lot of scouts now. Uh, with some aggression of the villagers, this tower went down in the end. So, let's see. <laughs> Back when <man>. stream cheating. <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. Okay. Next step. Speaking of Back, clicking up now to the next stage, cast stage. He has the Persians after all. The nice thing with them is, of course, early dock, nice economy, and their knights, very, very useful, right? Nice bonus. They're not the strongest Civ ever, and their relevance on water maps, hybrid maps, is somewhat outdated if you compare it to, for instance, Malians. I believe that to a certain extent, they, they have taken their spot, so to speak, but still, they are a choice. They are a choice, and they could be very useful. But I'm very, very curious to see what Spack is actually going to do with his... Quite early castle age. We'll see what exactly is going to happen very soon. On the other side, we have Nikov doing something interestingly as well. A lot of stone. You all know what's going to happen with that one. I smell conquistadores. It might be very, very impactful. Especially if you're up against the Persians. That is a very interesting thing. Because Back will most likely start with knights. If he wants to go for mounted units. But he might consider camels at some point. Or he has some other trick planned. We'll have an eye on that one, but for now, it just seems, yeah, either knights or camels. Rather classical move, you would say, but he is also up first. Let's see if he's going to be able to actually have a nice momentum over here. Yeah, and MBL's attempt to actually do something on water currently failing, but this tower might give him some defense. We'll see what exactly he's going to do with that one. It's very interesting to see that MBL actually didn't go for any kind of super insane aggression. Look at this KD. Look at this KD. I mean, he, just with his presence, he forced Char to actually go for these towers, right? Knowing that it will be very, very troublesome if he's up against Aztecs. But he has the melee after all, so he might be able to have a very good chance the later we are in this game. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, it might be that he's going to outboom, but we'll check it out. I also am quite impressed how persistent Cloud is with his aggression. He's still up there doing his thing, and even though Fire has stabilized with a massive number of spearmen, six in total, that's ideal if you can force your opponent into doing this, uh, he's still up here, right? Tower is up, Woodline denied, at least for now. This is very, very problematic, and now... We have him here. We have him here. Back now joining the game with his own knights. There we go. They have a long way to go. They have a long way to go. Just a single stable. An indication that he will most likely consider a boom over here. 3 TC setup. A lot of farms. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I just forgot for a second. Since he is on water. Not too many farms required in the beginning. Especially. 
So everything's looking quite nice here. Quite nice, quite nice. What is happening on the right hand side? Interesting. Oh my god, man. Interesting. The MBR is still able to do it. He is now catching charts to a certain extent off guard, if I might say that. All the fish potentially denied now. Strike whenever it's the most unexpected. But Nikov is in the middle. Also very important because that's that's the remaining section where you have juicy income. And if you dominate that area, it, it, it can become very problematic, of course. It might be that Nikov is going to have a really nice time. And currently he's now able to deal with Bark, who's now going back. I wonder, is he going to go for Camels? Yes. It just makes sense, right? I'm no magician. It just makes sense at this point. I guess Golden End would not agree with that one. In my opinion, it's just what I've seen. I'm not the pro here. It's just from experience, from spectating all the games. I see the camels always being around when once we see the conquistadors. A matter of taste, a matter of utility. It is Bax's choice to go for the camels. Something I have expected. Something we might have all expected. Let's see how that's going to go. Especially once he has husbandry. He's going to be able to chase them. We'll see. Was this played on fixed positions? Yes. Oh, the weed. The weed in the chat as well. Yeah. Okay. So it might be that fire is now left alone. Because as you can see, everything is stable once again. But what's going to happen... One minute difference between Cloud and Fire and the Castle Age uptime. At the same time though, Nikov going for some money shots. Killing Vils, Raiding Heart, and back not able to help. Oh my god, man, what is this? What is this kind of maneuver of Cloud? What are you doing, bro? Not like this, not like this. A lot of Vils unnecessarily dying. 28 Vils. Cloud with the fastest uptime, you might have said that he has done great things by actually denying all the wolves and the gold for fire, but in the end he's paying a big price and loses the fish, bills. Super weak castle age now that he's gonna have terrible situation. And that's the way to go against the Mongols. If you harm them that heavily, that they will not be able to actually have an impact in castle age, especially in, you know, with a super delayed Imperial Age. What are you gonna do as the Mongols? You wanna go for Mangodai, you see he he has, he has been on stone. Um, right now, though, all the stone invests into stone walls, knowing that he's so incredibly behind. And back just barely able to save his teammate over here, so he can just close up the walls. Very problematic, as I love to say. And now, dominance by the outsiders. All the pawns on the sides being taken over by them. Fire did a great job in the end, together with the help of the others. He is now able to claim the left-hand side completely. And forces Cloud into a defensive situation. But it doesn't end here. Because, very interestingly and successfully, Chart is now attacking from the back. Something that MBL might have not expected. But I'm not entirely sure if this is the money shot over here, right? Is, is that going to decide anything? It's just going to be a bit of an annoying one. But it's not going to destroy the Aztec's economy. Especially if we compare the situation. 50... Four units, you know, uh, it's not the villager amount here, it's just a mixture of fishing boats and uh, villagers. But in his case, there are no fishing boats due to this very situation. It is very striking to me, it is very striking to me that no one actually has gone for this area here, right? This was actually charged safe zone, so to speak, but not safe anymore. And Biel has landed, he has this one up here, the barracks. And also the Dark Gnome, just to make sure that this pawn is never going to be an option for his opponent. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And he's not going to have an impact on this one. A couple of Kongs will go down. Okay. Not the game decider as expected. I heard Nikov is a god on water maps. Well, in my opinion, in every team game, Nikov is going to have huge importance if he's in the pocket position you can expect some crazy stuff but at the moment where i'm praising him i'm jinxing it he is being raided but just by camels 
not the ultimate rating unit. <laughs> Interesting that though, those are going down. Those are going down. Uh, yeah, but not not the end of the world. I would say if you have 95 bills or oh, 95 units, I mean 69. Nice. Uh, bills plus 25 fishing boats. Hmm. It's fine. It's fine. I would say for now. But I also like Barracks Boom over here. He's doing a good job over here right now. I mean, his TCs are nice in this case for a boom. I would say. Pretty good. Nice rate. Output rate. Love it. But let's see what else is going to be happening. Imperial Age, that is, for him. And since we are in a team game like that, I would not be surprised if he just goes for Cavalier or Heavy Camels, more importantly. That makes more sense, I believe. And what about Nikov, though? When is he going to go up? Still on stone a bit. And he is now clipped up. There we go. There we go, Cavalier upgrade. Interesting, interesting. In my opinion, also risky move, by the way. So, just for information, this one is getting more and more serious. Um, I just want to know something here. Wow, he doesn't know about this yet, but he can probably anticipate it. And all of his crossbowmen are going to get cleaned up by nicely upgraded evils easily. Uh, once, of course, he has the amount of units for that one. Why would he land like this? Just to keep them busy? That it's <laughs> okay. Um, so my point is what I was uh, referring to the ch bag's choice to actually go for knights and very soon cavaliers is a way to not respond to what the opponents are doing in a way, you know, you're, you're not getting yourself, you know, be controlled by someone else. Because normally, I said probably heavy camels makes sense, then right? You will, you'll be up against Kongs, but what if you just don't? play this kind of game and do your own thing and go for your own aggression, focus on someone and ideally, of course, take him out of the game. Well, that is a lot of idealism at the moment because on the right hand side, it looks also really, really bad for Chark. Once again, he's being raided. 68 wills. Cloud also not doing too much better if you look at his economy. Uh, both flanks currently very weak and Barak needs to actually do it on, himself, on, on his own. It's, it's far from ideal. Because MBL is having a good time over here, nice boom. Fire is having a terrible time, for sure, for sure. But it seems that the damage done on Alliance, bigger and more significant. I mean, you are in a situation, you are in a situation in which the enemy flank is able to get the neutral pawns, your own pawns over here that is semi-safe. Um, semi and then this one, the safest pawn is being taken over. Um... I mean, it's only in the late game. All the fish is depleted. But you know, but you know, you should prevent this. There is potential space for a melee player, you know, to get his late game fishing equal up. That is a thing. It can work very nicely. It's not going to happen in this game. So the ultimate situation that we are in is that Bag is on his own, at least for now. Waiting a long time for the Mongols player to actually have an impact on this game. And we all know how long it takes for the Mongols to do that. If they're fast enough, you'll have a lot of beautiful Mongol dice. But no, not in this case. Super defensive mode. Um, resources invested for the sake of camels. Defensively important, understandable. Very soon even actually monasteries are required to actually fight this one off. You cannot just engage against an opponent who has his own monks and who will be able to just convert your units like that unless you go for some kind of other measures against the monks. But yeah, it's far from ideal as I love to repeat myself and it just doesn't get better here, does it? It's just an insane performance all in all by MPL so far in these two games. The previous one, this one, but also the others are working well. Fire is maybe the unfortunate one in his team. He's always being focused on. But as long as you survive, as long as you can reboom, and as long as you're stronger than the other ones of the opposition that are currently being raided, everything could be considered as fine. Though, chart, at least, I don't know. I would have expected more from this. Even though he has gone for the raid MBL as much as he could with, I mean, it's just a little section of his whole plan in which, you know, he has this one going on, this one going on, he has his own base going on. So, I know I don't want to talk down what MBL is doing here, but at least Chart is somewhat in the game. I, you know, struggle to, you know, believe that it's gonna be sufficient 
concerning what is going to be upcoming here. But maybe they have enough time to actually do something here. So, Paladin upgrade very soon. Uh, that is the time when the Elite... Oh, interestingly, Elite Conquistadors. So, I, you know... That's interesting, that's interesting. Yeah, as long as he has the numbers. I always, you know, have the feeling that with Kongs, their relevance fades, starts to fade away in the PLH, but it's an open map to a certain extent. Um, you have mobility, and they're of great use once they're masked up, especially. So that might be a bit of a problem for someone who is strongly relying on patterns now, and who is somewhat alone. He will not be able just to just tank up that much fire, and that might result in a very bad overall economic situation here, especially with the trade situation. I mean, fire is up here. And actually, you know, blocking roads for potential, potential markets, question mark, at some point in 10 minutes. Is that going to happen? Well, MBL is up here. Fire is up here. I am not entirely sure, my friends. I am not entirely sure. Right, so Nikov marching forward, denying resources conveniently here very soon. Even though that is the goal to fire, I strongly reckon. So, no denial yet. Let's wait for this one. Uh, this one, th I mean... This is now getting similar to what we had in the previous game. Defensive measures, defensive contributions, just resulting in more aggression by the others, if that makes sense. And MBL can just play his game. He has all the attention, and he is just getting here, convenient position, gets the castle up. Not gonna be the game ender, but... That's a nice opening for him for more aggression. I mean, he is inside, he is outside, he's everywhere currently around charge space. And it just doesn't get better. And if we look at the military numbers indeed, look at this one and compare him to these numbers over here. It's not long to raid. Nikop, insane economy, insane food income. He has gone for, um, yeah, I was on. Oh, interesting, interesting. Actually, back is also now paying tribute. Nikov with the same idea here. He has gone for Carnage as well, if I recall correctly. And he's going to be able to donate his food to the others as well, if that's needed. Garland Wars for MBL. Very soon, very soon. These Elite Eagle Wars will do even more damage. Potentially resulting in a bad fight for Paladins. I mean, it's going to be bad for sure. Because it's going to be very expensive. An expensive trade if you're just going to go for some Eagles like that. Eh. Very problematic. And there we go. More and more castles being dropped on the left hand side. And you would say, with Manga Dice, you might have a really good time here. But what if your economy is not strong enough? Well, for now it is strong enough. But what about the output rate? I'm not so sure about this one. Considering the amount of castles that I see currently from Cloud, it's looking grim, my friends. Very grim. You have no time to actually produce trebuchets. You are forced to deal with whatever is presented to you in your own ways. And there we go, Cloud only reaching MPLH now. Is he going for trebuchets right now? Nothing happening. Okay. There we go, there we go. Okay, this is a bit of an interesting one from MBL. He is losing a lot here. Also, donating his monks to the opposition. Fair enough, I guess. I see a lot of converted paladins, though. That might be more and more of a problem for the opposition. Left inside also looking very grim. Who would have thought, but Elite Kongs, late game, if masked up, if making use of their mobility and their persistence, paired with castles, trebuchets, resulting in this very situation in which we have 2-0 now for the outsiders, GG. Aha, uh -huh. here we are, finally. We are on Oasis. Uh, keep in mind, Rise to Glory Oasis is a version in which there is less wood. Just for your information. Just less wood. I mean, just ignore the just part. No, there is less. That might be very, very important. Before we talk about some stuff here, just curious. Are they going to go for some aggressive stuff again with the scouting? We'll see. Let's start. So, 
Um, let's start on the other side this time. So we start here with fire, left hand side flank with the Mayans. Pocket, interesting, gonna be MBL, very interesting. And now check this one out. Check this one out. Right inside we have Nikov with Vikings. I mean, okay. Okay. Interesting. Other side. Chart with Ethiopians. Pocket is going to be Cloud with the Indians. Last but not least, Back with the Chinese. And we know about Back and Chinese and on Oasis. He has delivered a masterpiece performance concerning that one. Not going to spoil too much, but worth checking out the previous game of Lions team. Oh, yeah. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> Kiddis is <laughs> complaining about this Lumber Camp. Well, it's at least close enough to the TC. That might be the philosophy behind that one. But let's check out what's going to happen actually on the left-hand side. Before we continue elaborating about life and so on. We have Chinese versus Mayans, if I see that correctly. Hmm. Let's see if that's going to be some early aggression, actually. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, from the Chinese, I would be surprised. I mean, you could go for scouts, but against Mayans, eh? Depending on the situation, I'm not so sure if I is just going to wall up. But he could also just go for Mayan arms. Also on the right-hand side, I'm just saying. I mean, we have Nikov now with the Vikings. Very interesting. And he's going to be up against who? That's charged with the Ethiopians. So, where exactly is this going Idea-wise, right? With the Vikings, nice economy, um, anti-cavalry, beautiful, late game, ooh, possibilities, trebuchets, berserks. It, it's interesting, but I, I want to see where this is actually going, the possibilities that you have. This might be very interesting. Let's see. If I see that correctly, no lame or anything like that is happening. That I see any. Not that I see any. Let's see. For real, I'm just thinking now. These serves and the, the, the these matchups that we have on the left and right hand side. Then I wonder why they chose this. I wonder why you have the Viking. The man. It makes sense. I mean, it always makes sense to have Marines in the team, but you know what I'm saying. But I will also appreciate to see if it's going to be an aggressive game. It seems like it for now, because we see no sign of walling. Oh yeah, there we go. By already going up with a barracks and BL. Going for a fast feudal with the Mongols, much expected. And going for a stone right away. Wait a second. What am I missing here? He is straddling gold, by the way. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see where he is. Hmm. He could be. He could be going for... Nah, nah. With that uptime, I really... I'm surprised now, and I'm looking forward to seeing what exactly is going to happen. He has no loom, indeed. Super hardcore fast castle. Yeah, but this, this. I'm curious, very curious, and excited. This is going to be very interesting. Right inside, we have a trush. So that makes sense if you have the Vikings, you have quite some beefy militia and very soon men arms. They're going to be able to, you know, withstand a bit more arrow fire. The fight is going to be more decent. With Ethiopians, you can expect the same procedure. Um, but this time without any towers, but just made arms potentially into arches, but we'll see about this. Left inside, it has already started, question mark. Back is walling up. Barracks is also going up, a slow start, and it's gonna be a double trush here. Mayan's trush and Viking's trush. Hmm. Interesting. But what kind of trush is that gonna be from fire? Yeah, also made arms. So, I mean, he is there with his uh, militia already, so that just makes sense. God, man. 
This could be problematic. Could be a fast game for both sides. Very interesting. Nikov not able to finish the archery range. He has a come up plan, so it's not going to be just Mad Arms Towers, but once he is ready to go, it will be potentially also Archers. But he's very, very careful. Not taking a single hit so far. Ooh, even adjusting the plans right now. We'll switch over to the other side very soon. Just want to see what's going to happen over here. Engagement now starting. A lot of wills engaging. Mad Arms. Or Char kicking in very soon. Nikov has it already. Home advantage for Char? Question mark. Yeah, seems like it. Because Nikov is, is forced to actually go away here. Left hand side. Defensive tower off back up in time. Very, very important. Very convenient. Forward barracks here by fire, by the way. Super aggressive. Yeah, this tower, of course, not saving the situation. You need another tower over here. But instead of a tower, obviously, since he doesn't have enough resources, he's going for the aggressive engagement, and now we have it, man. And together with Cloud, he's going to be able to actually deal with fire quite easily. Back, as you can see, the mid arms, obviously, of fire doing nice damage against potential scouts like that. And also, you can actually... Oh, wait a sec. I'm actually debating myself at forward backs. What am I talking about? It's just confusing because of this... Outpost here. My bad, my bad. But you get my point still. Still, Spearman could be a possibility for fire as well. Deal with potential scouts. Instead of anything else. Instead of anything else. It's actually... What kind of move is that? You know? Swalling up with stones. Okay. Right inside. What is going to happen? And BL indeed on cast stage, by the way. Super fast. <laughs> okay. So what he has done... Is potentially, I mean, not potentially, it's it's just the fact that he has uh, sold the stone. Gone for some super fast move here. And his killer instinct telling him to steal more resources. On the go. Very interesting. But I don't see that it's so impactful what fire does here currently. More of an emergency plan that he's now going for. Knowing that he's going to be up against a lot of aggression. And he's up too late with the walls. Obviously that's a very very tough thing to wall up that fast. Requires a lot of villagers. Requires a lot of dedication. A lot of idle time so to speak when it comes to econ economic input. So it's not going too nicely for fire. Right inside, it seems that Nikov has chances, but he currently doesn't do anything with that. Because he's shifting the focus onto Cloud, that will take a lot of time. Cloud might be able to just protect himself once it is time for that one. Okay, let's see, let's see. Let's see where this is going, guys. Wow. You know that your wall is not up in time. You lose fills. You must go for defensive fills. You are getting raided. Fire. Terrible start now. I mean, he does the best out of it, right? He's going for some emergency towers here. But it's very grim. Very grim. But what about this one here? Without defending himself with Vils and a tower. So it might be that Nikov is not going to have the greatest time. At least he is creating idle time. Even kills a Vil. That's definitely worth it. But what else? What else? Because Nikov is just extending the wall over here. Super, super interesting <laughs> wall. Consisting of buildings mostly. But not in a fashion that Fire attempted to do. Some offensive wall so to speak. And that has even failed. Backfire it's heavily, unfortunately, for him. And Back is actually using this one. His advantage. Very, very good. And BL sitting on 3 TCs, by the way. It's gonna be a slow boom, but he's going there. Currently having the highest amount of bills. Yeah, and what Fire does here is very unfortunate. 
it's not going too well currently for the outsiders. You would say the score says something else, by the way. We'll see how much that is going to reflect the truth over here. Now MBL even quick walling against a couple of scouts in order to protect another TC going up. Go up. Okay. Without going for his own castle age. Now this is once again an army that it might be very, very annoying to deal with. One will about to go down. You compare the wills between the two pockets, it's 29 wills versus 48, so MBL with the massive advantage. And now, only now going for Loom, just for your information. Knowing that he's going to be up against more harassment, protecting himself adequately. Oh, there we go, Will is going down. Yeah, that's an insane boom that we can expect here. On the other side, more or less some kind of stability that is going to be established for the Alliance team and also this wall. So, I'm just wondering how they're going to approach the situation. They, they probably anticipate now that MBL on multiple TC is going for some insane boom. He has the Mongols. We expect a lot of Mamadais some point so i wonder how they're going to approach this in a sense i mean i'm just wondering what the game plan of alliance could look like they have the chinese after all super versatile in the late game very very powerful they have the indians as well that might be very good especially against the mongols it could be very interesting to see that one imperial camels versus mangadai wow that could be awesome what about the mains, though? Well, if the mains guy is going to be taken off the game like that, that will be even more problematic. Look at Barak's numbers. Economy-wise, he's not up yet, but he's closer to clicking up than Fire is. And Barak also has more wills than Fire. A lot of idols for him, though. Well, it's great pressure created by the Turkish player. Oh my god, man, even another TC being added over here. This is going to be so dangerous at some point. And then o Oasis, it's possible to actually do it. The one thing that makes me feel anxious, though, is this one over here. Nikov is actually not showing any kind of safety over here with this kind of fragile walling. And also very, very close to, you know, the potential corner over here that is going to be claimed in 20 minutes or so. But he's trusting his own aggression. And also the fact that Chart has gone for some very, very tight walling as well. I mean, he is somewhat close in the middle, though, if you just look at the you know, this kind of situation that we're in. So I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Nico, best advice to actually get a wall up like this as well. Prevent any kind of push here. He opens push. It would be very problematic. Especially if, you know, at some point Siege is involved. It might be very, very annoying to deal with that. MBL probably trying to boom, yeah, and to get this uh, Mongol snowball. Well, yeah, I mean, if you got a massive amount of uh, Mango Dice and Imperial Age, that will be extremely, extremely hard to deal with. But I think with the Indians, if done correctly, and by that one I mean if synergized with the others correctly, uh, it will be very hard to actually have an impact like that. But on Oasis, you are able, uh, in most of the cases, you are able to create very tight situations in which it might be very, very powerful to have Mangadai. But before that can be even realized, you need to deal with any harassment like that. As you can see, there's potential harassment incoming. Back now about to go for Crossbowman, Botkin Arrow. And Fire is not up yet. Not even clicked up yet. Right. Well, what about this castle? I reckon it's gonna go up at some point, but... Looking dangerous. Something that MPL 
did not expect, probably thought that Fire would, you know, portray more safety in this game. But I also strongly assume that Fire has communicated the issue that he is not up, that he is under massive pressure. And MBL still able to keep everything close to together. 105 villagers, insane boom by MBL. Very, very impressive. Strong performance so far. And that might be extremely dangerous because, you know, you would say that it will take a lot of time until he gets to the point where he has this massive army. I mean, prepare your manga dice first of all. Go for the university, go for the stable, uh, go for the archer range and research everything. Well, that'll take some time, but if you're already on the way to Impelage, 30th minutes, you will be there. Hmm. That might catch opponents off guard. But we'll see about this one. Because currently, I feel that the flanks of Team Alliance are doing better here. Chart with some aggressive move. It seems that he's able to deal with Nikov better on a flank than with MBL. Fortunate shot there. Happens. Happens. This one... Still went on for a while, but Nikov is able to save the day. Thus, this university and the expansion of MBL's insane boom not going to be stopped. But for fire, it's grim. On the way to Castle Age. He's going to be up to Castle Age, and he's going to arrive in Castle Age later than MBL is going to be in Imperial Age. Just to give you some perspective how far behind he is. And Dr. Slow, man, thank you for the subscription. I mean, also my personal thanks in this case. Uh, even though I'm not, you know, official member of Will Be Official or so, but even back in the days, we were also around supporting. That is massive dedication. We appreciate it. That could be my point. Awesome stuff. All right. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And this game also developing in a way that is favoring Alliance when it comes to have an impact that is gonna, you know, look like a 3v2 situation very soon. You have camels. Arguably the stronger type of camels. It comes to their stats, they have additional pierce armor, they have the potential to go for and kill camels in the end. Of course, we're not close to that one. But it might be that the Mango Dice on their own will suffer. For that one, MBL is not considering Drill and Siege Ram, by the way. So he wants to have some Lamborghinis. Fair enough. But how is he going to be able to utilize that? Because the problem right now is... The problem right now is that, here in this case, Cloud is going to be able to actually claim this area if it continues. Like, but MBL thinking ahead, placing uh, these buildings over here, making sure that he's going to have an eye on this area, which is very, very crucial for the trade. So he does a great job here, but vision alone will not save him. We'll see how exactly they're going to solve that incoming issue of massive pressure. And being together with someone, and that is Fire, who's unfortunately not able to contribute too much for now. Something that might be very crucial. Okay, I want to see this, man. I want to see. I want to see what what exactly he plans to do with this army consisting of siege rams and mangadais. Bravely marching forward. Bravely marching forward. Does he attempt to raise these castles? Let's go then. I want to see this. Elite Mangadai upgrade. If we look at these Mangadai, it's going well. Chemistry still missing, but it's being researched. Bloodlines also being researched. Yeah, what now? What now? They're missing army here. They're missing army. People in the chat saying it's GG moment incoming. Is it true? 
right hand side more or less a stalemate when it comes to the battle between Chart and Nico for now. But that might be just the plan of Team Outsiders, right? Keep everything as it is on the right hand side, we'll go for the left hand side and, you know, take over. So this castle about to go down, this castle about to go down. It seems that Bag is not going to be able to withstand, even though he has a couple of Kukunus, that's not enough number wise. The position of the castles, not ideal for the very situation that he's in now. He needs help of Cloud, who's on the way to Imperial Age, going for Iron Cast and Hand Card, but that might be very late. And Biel at this point steamrolling. And I don't see a possibility right now for Bag actually do anything against this. If we look at the military numbers here, it's 13 units, 12 camels, 13 camels now, and 1 spearman, BS, 30 Mangodai, at 9 sea traps. It's a perfect plan. Keep everything safe on the right hand side. And you know, the Vikings pick. Especially with the possibility of having a great economy, especially food income wise, you know, if you go for a lot of farms. And I reckon there are quite some farms. It's just going to suggest a lot of skirms play with the Vikings. Something that one is quite familiar with. And that might work well against an Ethiopian player. And on the left hand side, well. Chinese player. Caught off guard. And the Indians player. Not able to arrive in time. And Bag is about to lose everything here. So, the question of course now is, what was the main mistake? Was the main mistake to give MBL the chance to go for the free boom? To go for such an insane castle age and ins even more insane imperial age? Go for 4 or 5 TCs? How do you respond to this one on Oasis? You need to go full aggression. How is that even possible to accomplish this with the sieves that they have? The slow-paced Chinese on the one side, the Ethiopians that are kept busy on the right-hand side, and the Indians, well, they're actually fast as well. Nice boom, nice boom possibilities, but it seems that this army, the combination of, I mean, the well-known combination of uh, Drill Siege Rams and Mangadai is fully upgraded, is just unstoppable at this point, in this very situation. Or is it? Because at least, at least, now that back someone functions as a meat shield here, we see a nice set of heavy camels. Of course, I'm not entirely sure if that is enough. If done correctly, MPL can deal with this. He just has enough Mangodai to actually deal with this quite nicely, if you ask me. And having... Uh, plus 4 that translates into plus 5 with the Indians is, is decent enough for sure. Well, the numbers currently are winning this easier. And it might not be enough that you have a couple of scurbs against the Mangadites. So, it's deeply problematic over here. But I'm also positive that Cloud is going to be helpful enough. Or is he? Because they're calling it GG. They're saying, good luck next. And that is it. That is it. GG. GG Outsiders. MBL, Nico, Fire, able to actually do it. And they win 3 0 against Team Alliance. Cloud charged back, fought bravely. But congrats to the winners, the Outsiders. Unfortunately, not a fourth or fifth game here. Yeah, that, that's quite unfortunate because I thought that I actually uh, worked really well together the last time. But it seems that the combination of MBL, Nikov, and Fire is simply, simply well thought here. The strategy was really nice in this one. I like to see this. In the end, as you probably have heard, it's quite... Thoroughly, I was not able to actually see the bigger picture here, as in, I didn't put everything together in that way. Now, it is a great, great plan, 
nicely executed. And it worked really well. So congrats to the outsiders. We'll go back here. 